come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. These words you will recognize from the Nicene Creed, our symbol of faith, which we pray during the Divine Liturgy every time it is celebrated, <coughs> and also at other services throughout the day. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God. Today our Gospel lesson is the scriptural source in detail of the second coming of Christ our Lord into our human history, his coming as judge at the last day. The lesson is clear, specific, uncomplicated. In it we learn exactly what each individual from the beginning of time until the last day on earth will be judged upon at that awesome judgment seat of Christ. And like everything else in our Christian faith, what each person did with the image of God in which he or she was created is dazzlingly simple. Dazzlingly simple. It's so simple that most people can't see it. Did you do your good works, and did they testify to your faith? Did you? If people did, they'll find among themselves, uh, among the sheep. If they did not, they'll find themselves among the goats. During our time in this life, <coughs> If we have been blessed with the gift of saving faith, we will make our primary life's goal to, as the scripture says, work out our salvation. And how do we work out our salvation? The answer is simple. Love God above all, and your neighbor as yourself. Two the two laws of love. Love of God. You see, they work together. We can't do one without the other. The Holy Fathers tell us you can't say, I love God and spurn your neighbor. You can't say you love God and not let him into your services in the morning because he's not dressed exactly the way you think he should be dressed, like a Russian peasant or something like that. <laughs> Can't do one without the other. That's why the judgment declared from his throne of glory is made so clear for us in the scene presented in today's gospel. The sheep have loved God, and they have joined that love of God to their love for all other humans. Unconditionally. Our Lord, as one of the divine persons of the Holy Trinity, came into the world to save sinners. He came to save all of them. And he loves all of them. We profess that every time we recite the words from St. Paul's Gospel as we're preparing ourselves to take communion. He came into this world to save sinners of whom I am chief. They are in this image. No matter the outward appearance they show to the rest of us. He can refer to some as <coughs> the least of his brethren, because they might appear to be of much less worth than other people. But the sheep on the right hand of Christ do not go by appearances. They see a human need and they respond unconditionally to it, to meet it. They see Christ in the sufferer, and they bind up his wounds. They see a person hungry, and 
and they feed him, and they see him thirsty, and they give him a drink. They don't spend a lot of time thinking about it. I had a prisoner long ago in another parish, bless his heart, who told me that he kept in his billfold a supply of five dollar McDonald gift cards. When approached by beggars, he would give them the gift cards rather than cash, because he said, quote, if I give them cash, they just spend it on booze or drugs. Well, better than nothing, I guess. But our Lord doesn't ask us to analyze the worthiness of the person expressing a need for our mercy. Our mercy must be like God's mercy. We're created in His likeness. Our mercy must be unconditional. I give a guy a five dollar bill. I don't, it's, he says he's hungry. That's all I need to know. Of course, if he comes here, I'll give him some of Martha's soup. <laughs> on the street, you know. They, they, <coughs> out at Walmart, when you have to go there, the horror, where you, <laughs> you uh, have people with signs on cardboard. Hungry. That's Christ. That's coming. Our mercy must be As we begin the great fast a week from tomorrow, let us go into it with the wholehearted, unconditional love that today's gospel lesson asks of us. <coughs> we usually think of repentance as a kind of three-legged stool of prayer, fasting, and giving alms. Okay? Now, we need to live the gospel 24-7, 365 days a year, but Lent is a time when we focus on these good works. Prayer, fasting, almsgiving, together. <clears throat> Today, Meet Fair Sunday, we start practicing for the great fast, as far as it can, includes meat. We say farewell to meat today. Meet Fair Bye-bye. The French have a beautiful word for it. Carnival. Try to carne. Carne, you know, flesh. Chile con carne. Bye-bye. And those French people in New Orleans uh, say it rather <laughs> interestingly. <laughs> <laughs> So, starting tomorrow, we abstain, as our circumstances allow, from eating meat and fish, except shellfish. You can eat shellfish because shellfish doesn't have a backbone, and the Holy Father say, if it doesn't have a, boat, a backbone, it isn't meat. Okay. So, we eat a lot of shrimp around here. Very interesting. And this meat fair gets us ready for next week, when on next Sunday, Cheese Fair Sunday, we say farewell to dairy products and eggs. Bye-bye. No more eggs. No more cheese. No more milk. No more ice cream. It's supposed to hurt, folks. It's supposed to be a sacrifice. <laughs> Not that you go around the world telling, hey, I fast three times a week. Or do you? If you're orthodox, you fast seven days a week during Great Lent. <clears throat> Let us enter our 2024 Great Lenten fast with rejoicing as we look forward to the Feast of Feasts, Holy Pascha, the resurrection from the dead of our Lord, God, and Savior, Jesus Christ, our Savior. To him who, at his second coming, we humbly pray to be numbered among the sheep 
on his right hand. Be all honor and glory, together with his Father, who is from everlasting, and his all holy, good, and life-creating spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of 